Hey, it's Lucy. I hate mobile phones. I hate this thing. I don't want to be in constant touch. I don't want people to expect me to be in constant touch. And I, I honestly, I miss the days of snake and flip phones. So for there to be an app on my phone that makes me want to use it, it's got to be really good. The list of apps I'm going to talk about that got me through my PhD are so fundamental that I've put off making this video for years in the hope I would discover one that was or more unusual or, or esoteric or unheard of. And it just hasn't happened. They've remained very fundamental. But I think there's something to that. And so now, a few weeks before my fiver, here it is my top five mobile phone apps for PhD students. And worth mentioning, nothing in this video is paid promotion, I wish. All right, first one up is Calendar. Oh hey, it's a boring, ordinary one you wouldn't think much about. This thing saved my life. I've talked about Calendar in my Essential Apps for Computers video, but this takes on a whole life of its own once you get it on a mobile phone. And in the busiest part of my PhD, I went through a long and advisable phase of checking it first thing each morning the way I would check the morning news. What's the weather like today? Is it neutral and cloudy all day with room for lab chores? Is it 90% chance of rain at two o'clock at my supervisor meeting? Or is it a bright sunny spell all week long while I'm teaching undergraduates in the field? Or is it one of those days where you bring your sun cream and your raincoat because by the end of it you're doing so many different things, you're going to be both burnt and soaked to the core. The calendar app, whichever phone you have, is essential for PhD students. Be consistent if you choose to use it. Put everything in the moment it comes up. And I mean everything, because once you start to rely on this thing, and you should because we are fallible and this thing is not, then you will come to wholly rely on it. And if it's not in your calendar, you'll be like, well, it wasn't in my calendar, so how would I have known? Feed this thing with appointments and it will in turn look after you. It's great for conferences. I would add every little talk I wanted to go to, even if they clashed. It's great for dividing academic and personal lives because you can usually color code it. It's great for realizing that time is finite and that you can't do everything. And so choose carefully what you allow in this thing and make sure it's adding value to your life. Changing topic for the next one, PhD students are, as a general rule, skinned. When I lived in Oxford, half my stipend went on my rent and the other went for saving for a house. And so I wanted to spend as little money on anything else as I possibly could. To this end, I frequently loved and used the eBay app. eBay is one big searchable charity shop in that, while much of it is rubbish, good stuff does end up here too. It's just harder to find. But that's where these filters and categories come in. I love old books, but with lockdown, you can't really go hunting around in charity shops so much anymore. So this thing is great for searching for different bindings, different niceness of the covers, different types of covers, and I've discovered some really amazing things through this. And then there is the selling, and this is a million times easier on the app than on the web. You just fill in the categories here, bit of description, and easiest of all, you take pictures straight from your phone to upload. Books I've read that I wasn't fussed enough to keep, clothes that I realized I'm not wearing anymore. Each listing probably won't sound like you're getting much for it, but it really adds up. And better still, you are decluttering your house. For number three, let's dip back to productivity and talk about an app that is both ordinary and vital but I'm going to add a twist that will make its use a lot more peaceful. And this is your mail app. Begrudgingly, I accept I want emails on my phone. Sometimes it's just really handy to have the information there right now, and it can be vital if you're on the go. But here's the key twist. This function here, this button here, and from this, peace. I haven't had email notification on my phone for years, except for international travel. and. Well, you know, I miss out on immediately hearing that reception is closing early today. But hey, in exchange for these great sorrows, I get long stretches of unbroken thought. I get training in not being distracted by the latest shiny thing or the latest pop-up. I get to choose when to see these vital developments for myself. Our jobs require concentration. They require the following through of long chains of thought to reach higher levels of understanding. And every little red badge on your home screen, it is a thief of reaching those higher forms of consciousness. It is a thief, it is a robber mouse of concentration. Have the mail up and let it work for you, but have it work for you when you tell it to work for you. For number four, it's going to be another ordinary one. And can you see a theme emerging here yet? But it's one that's so useful, it's sort of invisible in the same way that the trick for breathing automatically is invisible. And this is a good note-taking app. A year ago, I'd have heartily recommended Evernote, which Let's just not go there. The latest update rendered it unusable and I, RIP Evernote, it's very sad. 
And since then, I've just started using Apple Notes. Note taking over a PhD is vital, obviously. But having an app for this instead of just a jotter makes the finding and the organizing of the notes incomparably simpler. You can have different folders for similarly themed notes, you can organize by date, you can search keywords, you can add images. They're the kind of little things that would have been on scraps of paper in another life that I'd have either lost or it would have been buried in an old jotter. While physical notebooks do have their place, and I had an old jotter that I used for calculations and sketches of stuff to get my head around. For everything else, have it computerized and organizable because it's just so much simpler. Okay, last but not least, my final recommended app for PhD students is... Don't be angry with me because I'm kind of cheating here. It is the absence of apps, specifically the absence of social media apps. Back when I was on Twitter, I found myself thinking of it quite a lot, I found myself sliding onto it, and I found myself looking at things I didn't want to look at that made me feel bad for looking at them, that made me feel bad about myself for wasting my time. So I deleted it off my phone. The talking isn't necessarily bad, it's just that micro and fragmented nature of it split across the whole day when you've got other things to do. Oh, they've replied, let me reply. Oh, someone's chipped in on my post. And these sites are weaponized to hook you in, to steal your focus, an, an army of robber mice after your concentration. I've actually come off social media entirely now. That's a video for another day. But just getting the app off this rectangle I carry around with me all day, it was a big step in reducing the weird dependency I'd got on it. PhD students are training to be thinkers and understanders of stuff no one has ever figured out before. But with the siren call of distraction, of cat gifts, of the endorphin rush of strangers liking your lab video, I just don't think we can get those long enough stretches of time that we need to do the figuring out. Just try deleting the apps from your phone and see how it makes you feel. Give it a week or two, but I found the half-life for this stuff, it's pretty short, and after a week or two, I found I was thinking of social media a lot less. Okay, that is it. Those are my five-ish mobile phone apps for PhD students. And like I said at the start of this video, I've been waiting my whole PhD to make this, hoping that I would come across some super esoteric productivity app that upped my output by five orders of magnitude. But what I keep coming back to is just, I hate this thing. I begrudgingly have a phone and I make it work for me. I make it work for me on the goals that I have set myself, like getting a PhD. Have a look at the apps on your phone and ask yourself the same question. Is that thing working for you or is it the robber mouse, the thief of concentration and focus, sapping your time away and stopping you from getting done what you most want to. Just something to think about. Tell me in the comments what your top five mobile phone apps are. Break me out of my cynicism, tell me what I'm missing, and help me see the light of the little ones and knots. Tell me how you juggle staying productive with so many forms of distraction tugging our grey matter in all directions. And if you like this video, please do check out my previous videos for more PhD related stuff, or do subscribe to see what happens later this month when I have my Viva. My name is Lucy Kizik. I'm a soon to be no more PhD student at the University of Oxford. I'm a nuclear chemist and take care.